growing season uh, gives a very intimate portrait of one unique migrant community in Hartville, Ohio. And as Gary and I discovered in doing the project, it's a place where we feel people are doing it right. Well, what started off as a project about migrants working in the fields really became a project about family and community. Hartville is located just north of Canton and uh, there's a lot of farms and migrant labor is very important to the community. It's a tight-knit community um, with not a lot of cultural diversity in the, in the, in the citizens that live there year-round, but, it, but it's surprisingly tolerant and open to the migrant workforce that comes there year after year. I think that there is a strong faith-based thinking that goes on in Hartville um, that translates well toward um, a very ethical and moral treatment of, of migrant workers. While I was there, I had an opportunity to drive around the camps and to look at um, the farm. I was amazed by the um, rows of immaculate crops and the deep, rich black soil. And of course, in the distance, you could see uh, migrant workers in uh, groups of 10. They were all kind of bent over in the fields, and they had their large straw hats. And they were a mystery to me, and I really wanted to know more about them. So it was that first day that I knew I wanted to come back and make this a long-term project. Entire families uh, work on the farm, and they all live on the perimeter of the farm fields on K.W. Zeller's family farm. I began driving around the perimeter of the field, getting photographs, and where I could get pictures, I would make pictures, and then I would bring them back and uh, hang them up in the migrant center. They were being displayed in the center, which they liked very much. So in the process, um, we kind of felt that it was about time to meet the uh, farm owner, uh, Jeff Sellers, and I don't even think I got my name out. He looked right at me and saw my cameras and he said, out, I want you off this property now. <laughs> And so that was pretty much the end of that. Uh, I said, but, no, out. But my name is, no, I want you off the land. <laughs> Over time, I learned he was just basically um, uh, defending them and caring for them and, and making sure that they uh, were not going to be taken advantage of. He granted me access to his field. The farm owner, he has a long story in the book, and he talks about that he's tired of what he, what he calls the grapes of wrath mentality of the media who will come to his farm looking for a sad story to tell. So here, here was a different kind of story. I wasn't expecting that kind of joy. I really wasn't. I wasn't expecting that level of happy. And so I needed to rethink this a little bit. I needed to readjust where I was in relation to this project. I had a plan, and then that plan would ch changed quite a bit as they were teaching me about who they were and what they were about. I had no idea the degree to which black muck sticks to you, and so I have these white work pants that I wear when I go out and I do stuff, and that, they're not particularly nice pants, but they are white. And I also had white tennis shoes on and white uh, socks. And so I showed up in a black muck field with all white clothes on, and the workers just howled. They thought that was the funniest thing. They were really wondering about me right there. And they had a good time with this, and, and I walked out there, and they're all laughing in the fields. And I leaned over to the, um, the farm owner's cousin, who, who oversees the production in the fields, and I said, they're, they're laughing at me, aren't they? And uh, he says, oh, yes, big time. And so it kind of became this kind of icebreaker. But permission to photograph the families was completely up to them and I was not permitted to drive up to their property and to begin photographing them. The only way that he would allow me to be near the families is if the families invited me. So there was a real challenge going from the fields to the families. My real big break was uh, one of the uh, people in the migrant center introduced me to one of the women who was getting married. Is there any opportunity so I could photograph your wedding and she thought that would be fine. Two weeks later a woman came up to me and asked me if I would photograph her daughter's first communion and this was the beginning of kind of documenting the family aspect of their lives which I really wanted. Gary and I made a point of 
working separately on the farm. So I did not go out intentionally to, to, to find a story for his photographs, and he did not take photographs simply to illustrate a story. We were allowed to make our own discoveries. We would meet regularly for lunch, we would talk about our discoveries, and so it was toward the end that we started to really put our work together and the storytelling process began. In, in spending two and a half years interviewing the, the migrant community and the community around the farm, I was taken again and again and really in awe of the strong sense of family and the extended sense of family. Uh, you know, the, the migrant workers would care for each other's children and community members in Hartville would volunteer at the migrant center and, and care for the migrant children. Here were people who were not making much money, but they were incredibly happy people. It's humbling um, to see the kind of joy that they do have despite the hardship of their lives and the labor. If you read David's stories, they're pictures. And I'm hoping that through my pictures you see stories. And so we uh, would collaborate in interesting ways only because our work was collaborating ahead of us. I have two photographs that are very special to me. The first one, um, the bus driver taking the kids back to the camps realized that the water was too close to the road and was getting the road wet. And so she decided that she would park the bus in the area where the spray was. And you can actually hear it coming. And so there was this moment of, of anticipation as the kids are about to get wet and then when they got wet. When Gary and I finished the project and the, and the book was published, well, we had a book signing at the Camp Museum of Art. Instead of one author table, we had seven tables lined up, and, and many of the migrant children and adults sat with us at the book signing table and signed their pages. Uh, they were signing underneath their photographs and next to their stories, and we were signing. And we realized then that they felt a real ownership to this project, and they felt that growing season told their story truthfully, and they were proud of it. Growing Season tells an essentially classic American story, one of assimilation and one of watching children and families becoming the first generation of Americans. Migrant work is, is very difficult. Very, very few Americans would want to do that kind of work. But there is something amazing about doing hard work well and then coming home and celebrating what you have, celebrating your family, celebrating your friends, and, and enjoying being on this earth.